this is uh, question 5 from the January 2010 uh, BY1 paper. Uh, this question is uh, on the osmosis topic. Okay, um, so let me read out the question. Uh, the diagram shows cells taken from the stem of a plant. Cells A, B and C are adjacent cells and the figures give the water potential of each cell. Okay, um, so no doubt the, uh, the examiner will want us to use that diagram uh, in a moment. So let's scroll down. Okay, part A1. Draw arrows on the diagram to show the overall direction of water movement between these three cells. That's worth one mark. Right, in order to know uh, in which direction the water moves, you have to understand water potential values. All right, so you've got three water potential values. Uh, let's start at cell A, that's minus 400 kilopascals. B is minus 380 kilopascals, and C is minus 360 kilopascals. Okay, uh, so in order to get uh, the direction of water movement, you have to understand the uh, uh, concept of osmosis, all right, and that uh, water will move by osmosis down a water potential gradient. Okay, and the water potential gradient will be from high to low. So we've got to decide now what water potential value is the highest uh, in those three cells because that will mark our starting point. Water will move from the highest water potential to the lowest. So um, way to remember that now is any negative value that's closest to zero uh, will have the higher water potential. Okay, Remember that zero is the highest water potential and any negative value that's closer to zero will be a higher water potential. So for example, minus 360 um, will be the highest water potential value because minus 360 is closer to zero than minus 380 and minus 400. Okay, uh, if you're not too sure about that, look in my notes. I've got a good diagram there that shows uh, and explains water potential values and uh, sort of how negative numbers uh, relate to zero uh, water potential. Okay, so uh, our uh, line then will go from uh, C into B and from B uh, into A. All right, so I would draw uh, two diagram, uh, sorry, two arrows. Uh, to show the movement of water there. Okay, that was worth uh, one mark. Right, uh, part A2 then. Explain your answer in terms of water potential. Okay, so I've uh, pretty much done that already when I was explaining um, water potential values uh, in relation to the diagram. But basically, you know, water moves down a water potential gradient from high to low, okay, and it does that by osmosis. Uh, a key tip here for you is on uh, questions relating to osmosis, and they ask you to explain about osmosis, you must always mention um, water moves by osmosis. You will always get a mark for that, okay. And um, also in this question as well, when you're explaining uh, your answer. You could actually use uh, the water potential values from uh, from the diagram. Okay, so you could perhaps put in and say that uh, uh, minus 360 kilopascals is the highest water potential, and maybe minus 400 kilopascals is the lowest water potential. Okay, so don't be afraid to actually use values uh, that the examiner gives you uh, in your answer. Uh, okay, there's the uh, the answer I've written in. Water moves down a water potential gradient uh, from high water potential um, to a lower water potential. Uh, the water will move by osmosis from minus 360 kilopascals to minus 400 kilopascals. Okay then, uh, part B. Um, the diagram below shows two plant cells, X and Y. 
as seen through a microscope. Uh, the figures show the solute potential and the pressure potential for both cells and the water potential for cell Y. Okay, so the examiner now has actually left out uh, the water potential for cell X. All right, and I can see now he's got uh, the osmosis equation there. So uh, I'm wondering whether he wants you to do some calculations here. Okay, I bet he does. Um, so take a look at the um, the values anyway. Pressure potential look for both cells uh, is a uh, positive value. All right, uh, a thousand kilopascals for cell X, zero kilopascals for cell Y. Now you should know instantly when you see a pressure potential for a plant cell of zero, you should know that that cell is either plasmalized or in incipient plasmolysis, okay? Because those are the two conditions that lead to a zero uh, kilopascal pressure potential. Okay, um, solute potentials then are both negative values, which is correct, and uh, the water potential for cell Y is minus 1,000. Uh, kilopascals. So, um, just uh, you know, just just to highlight to you, this is what you should be able to do at this stage. Uh, you should know that uh, from the um, osmosis equation down here, that if you've got a minus thousand kilopascal water potential and a minus uh, kilopascal solute potential, you will therefore get a, a pressure potential uh, of zero. OK, uh, that's something I've highlighted uh, in my notes about how uh, you can get uh, a pressure potential uh, of zero. OK, right back to uh, uh, the question then. Um, you're asked now in part one to calculate the water potential of cell X and you need to show your workings as well. So let's go back up. Um, now, this is a straightforward calculation, okay, because you want to calculate the water potential of the cell. Uh, you don't have to rearrange the equation because water potential is already the subject of the equation. So all you have to do is um, put in the value. So you've got solute potential of minus uh, 1800, a pressure potential of 1000, okay. Uh, so all you have to do is uh, put those values into your calculator and um, come up with the answer. So what you need to do is you need to type in 1000, okay, minus uh, 1800, and that will give you an answer of uh, minus 800 uh, kilopascals, okay. So make sure you get the uh, the signs right. Okay, it's a thou it's positive for the uh, pressure potential. Okay, and it's a, a negative value for the uh, solute uh, potential. Okay, so I've just typed in uh, the values there. Uh, so what I've done is that I've uh, I've kept the uh, it consistent with the. Um, equation. So what I've done is I've put the solute potential first because that's what comes uh, first in the equation and then I've put the pressure potential next uh, as shown there. So minus 1800 plus 1000 will give you an answer of minus 800 kilopascals. Uh, remember to put the units in. You will lose a mark uh, if you don't put the units in. Okay. Right, uh, part two then. State the name of the condition shown by cell Y and explain how this condition could have arisen. Uh, so let's scroll back up to cell Y. All right, now I've already mentioned earlier the pressure potential is zero and that is a typical uh, value for a cell that has uh, uh, that is in plasmolysis or is plasmalized. Okay. Uh, you also get a zero uh, pressure potential when the cell is in incipient plasmalized as well. Okay, uh, but this cell isn't in incipient plasmolysis because the cell membrane 
um, has really pulled away uh, from the cell wall. So this, I would say, is a, a cell that's become plasmalized there. All right. Um, so you need to explain how the cell has become uh, plasmalized. Okay. So you've stated the name of it. It's plasmalized. Okay. That's the name there. And explain how this condition could have uh, arisen. All right. Well, basically, the cell has lost water. Whenever a cell becomes plasmalized, it has lost water by osmosis. So what can promote the loss of water from a plant cell? Well, it's simple. If you understand how osmosis works, you know water will move from a high water potential to a lower water potential. So that cell will have to have been put in a solution of a lower water potential. Okay, so you would have to put the cell into a hypertonic uh, solution. A hypertonic solution, remember, is a solution with a high concentration of dissolved solids and therefore has a low water potential. All right, so once you put the cell uh, into a hypertonic uh, solution, water will leave and what's happening is the cytoplasm and the vacuole will start to shrink and then the cell membrane uh, will pull away from uh, the cell wall. Okay, so I've, uh, I've put my answer in. Um, I just want to highlight a couple of things. Um, I've obviously answered the first part of the question by saying the cell is plasmalized. Okay, and um, I've stated that this occurs by placing the cell in a solution of lower water potential. I've decided not to mention that the solution was hypertonic, although I could have. Uh, we could have said that it was placed in a solution of a higher uh, concentration of solids. Okay, but the examiner will allow the lower water uh, potential. Okay, I've then said, importantly, water will leave uh, the cell by osmosis. You always have to put that in, okay, uh, to get a mark. And lastly, I've said the cytoplasm and vacuole will shrink. That's also an important uh, statement to remember. And that causes the cell membrane to pull away uh, from the cell wall. Okay, then, uh, C1. Uh, cell X has a high pressure potential. Explain how this pressure potential uh, is built up in cell X. Uh, well, let's scroll up to cell X and as you can see, um, the um, cell membrane um, is uh, completely pressed against the cell wall. All right, so you can see the direct comparison between the plasmalized cell, which is cell Y, and cell X is actually a cell that's turgid. Okay, and uh, whenever a cell, a plant cell, is turgid it has a, a very high uh, pressure potential okay um, so how does a cell become turgid how does this pressure potential become so high well it's because water is moving into the plant cell uh, by osmosis of course down a water potential gradient yeah so the the cell x then would have to have been placed into um, a solution with a higher water potential uh, compared to the uh, inside of the plant cell. All right. So technically, the the solution the plant cell is placed in is a hypotonic solution. Remember, hypotonic solution is one that has a high water potential because it has a low concentration of dissolved solids. Okay, now that of course is explained in the notes. All right, um, so why do we get this high pressure potential? Well, it's all to do with uh, the cell wall. Okay, that cell wall is extremely rigid, it's inelastic, it cannot be stretched, um, so it actually uh, resists uh, the pressure being generated uh, by the water pressing on it. So if the if the green line there is the the water inside the cell it actually pushes against the cell wall and because the cell wall is rigid it doesn't uh, stretch 
uh, a pressure is being generated within that cell okay um, so these are the key aspects of what's happening uh, during um, uh, the cell becoming uh, turgid okay then so let's uh, let's scroll down and uh, uh, type that answer in okay uh, I've written in the answer there and um, I've said that water enters the cell by osmosis again okay that's an important part I always mention osmosis okay I've forgotten the T out of water okay um, so the cell enters uh, sorry water enters the cell by osmosis and uh, the cytoplasm expands um, and the cell has become turgid okay so turgid uh, uh, will get you a mark there uh, in the uh, uh, mark scheme so will water enters by osmosis okay um, so as the cytoplasm expands the contents then push against the cell wall okay because the cell wall is inelastic it resists further expansion so the cell wall cannot stretch anymore and uh, that then causes the the pressure to uh, increase okay so that was worth three marks uh, next then suggest the effect on seedlings okay seedlings um, okay are just plants basically uh, if all their cells were in the condition as shown in cell Y now cell Y of course uh, is the plasmalized cell okay and when a cell is plasmalized okay the cell becomes quite soft okay and um, that condition causes wilting of seedlings so when a plant uh, wilts its leaves drop uh, you know um, it can then or is under the condition of plasmolysis all right so water actually uh, provides a, a supportive role in plants it keeps them upright and and sturdy so um, when a, when the cells become plasmalized then they the the condition is known as wilting uh, in plants okay so uh, let's just have a uh, quick look at the mark scheme then okay for uh, question number five all right it's pretty straightforward really um, nothing too problematic I think in here we've got uh, the direction of the water flow okay that's the uh, explanation there of uh, the movement of water this is the calculation the examiner has done okay uh, he's actually uh, it doesn't matter but he's actually put the figures in the wrong way round there okay according to the, the way he's written the equation all right but the answer comes out the same all right no problem as long as you remember to put the positive and negative values in um right okay so there's the plasmalized one all i want to point out to you um here is the vacuole shrinks okay the cell has been placed in a concentrated solution for lower water potential all right that's what causes the uh, uh, plasmolysis to occur okay um, lastly then part C this is talking about uh, uh, how the cell becomes turgid okay water passes into the cell by osmosis look so we've got to put by osmosis in the cytoplasm expands the cell becomes turgid uh, and the cytoplasm pushes against the cell wall and the cell wall is elastic okay um, so as long as you remember these key terms all right um, I know osmosis is quite a big topic uh, for the Welsh Joint Board um, but um, they also have questions with a lot of marks on osmosis so it is a, a critical topic that you understand and lastly then uh, about the plant wilting uh, when it becomes plasmalized okay and uh, that's the end then of uh, this question